this video, I'm going to be testing the Wolf Warrior XGT to figure out whether or not it's worth your time and money. While testing the XGT, I made sure to compare it against a range of scooters that sit in the same performance class. Those scooters included the Mantis King GT, its predecessor, the Wolf Warrior X, and the much cheaper Splash Titan. And so throughout this video, I'll be making comparisons of how the Wolf Warrior XGT performs against its most fierce rivals, where speed, range, and brake performance as well as build and ride quality are concerned. Now to get to the nitty gritty I'm just going to come out and say that with a top speed of 43 miles per hour, a maximum range of 50 miles and strong brakes the XGT certainly brings power to the table and for those that love the big imposing build of other Wolf models it represents a more affordable entry into this premium line of scooters. However, despite being equipped with hybrid tyres that deliver excellent traction, it falls short of other similarly priced scooters that promise better ride quality over varied terrain. But now I'm going to give you a quick overview of the scooter, explain who it's best for, and then we'll go over the eight things that I love, as well as the four areas that need to be improved. I'll also be sharing results from my tests so you can make a more informed decision about whether the Wolf Warrior XGT is right for you. When Kaboo released the original Wolf Warrior X, scooterists who wanted a lighter, smaller alternative to the original Wolf Warrior howled in delight. This was followed by the Wolf Warrior X Pro, an upgrade that came with a bigger battery, a better display, yet with its inferior square wave controllers, a slightly slower acceleration rate and jerky throttle. A misstep perhaps, but there's now a new pack leader in town, the Wolf Warrior XGT. Integrating the best of its predecessors into one complete demonstration, this brooding juggernaut is even closer to delivering the X factor that's long been teased. It has a few flaws and some areas of its design would have benefited from a refresh, but after all, no electric scooter is perfect. Whether you think it's good value or not will depend on what you want from a scooter. If that's a viciously fast model designed to burn rubber on the asphalt, then it's a great option. But if you're searching for an all-terrain type Titan that soaks up the irregularities of whatever you can throw its way, then you'll be better off with the Mantis King GT. And you can watch my full review of that model by clicking on the links in the description. Brandishing dual 60 volt 1100 watt motors and 30 amp sine wave controllers, the XGT not only gobbles up steep inclines but produces a peak power output of 4400 watts, allowing it to hit a vicious top speed of 43 miles per hour. But how does this compare against similarly priced models? Well, at $2,295, Five other models within a range of $500 can be compared to it, and not one can better its top speed. Its closest competitors are the Mantis King GT and the Apollo Phantom 60 volt, both of which match it for pace. However, if we dig a little bit deeper into the data and consider acceleration, the true winner is revealed. While the XGT hits 15 miles per hour from a standstill in a whiplashing 2.1 seconds and 25 miles per hour in just 4.2 seconds, the Mantis King GT is faster. It hits 15 miles per hour in just 1.9 seconds before reaching 25 miles per hour in 4 seconds flat. Its predecessor on the other hand is a close match to the new GT model but it does on average accelerate at a rate that's 8% slower. One other model that I've thrown into the mix here is the Splash Titan. This scooter has smaller and less powerful 52 volt 1000 watt motors but manages to achieve an impressive acceleration rate while costing just shy of what the Wolf retails for. One of the things I love most about Kaboo's Wolf range is the synonymous dual stem. The XGT continues this proud lineage and once again its value is immediately apparent. While many scooters are prone to wobbling more than Pavarotti's diaphragm at higher speeds, you'll find none of that here. The reinforced stem guarantees stability. Combined with the ergonomic thumb throttle and six riding modes, power is funneled from the dual motors with exemplary smoothness and control. This makes it extremely enjoyable to ride at top speeds through urban environments, especially when carving and cornering. 
Equipped with a battery that marks a huge departure away from the previous Wolf Warrior X, the LG 60 volt 28 amp hour unit is bigger, better and longer lasting than the cheaper 60 volt 21 amp hour FST variant, translating into a superior maximum range of 50 miles or 43 miles under realistic running conditions, it surpasses the original X. It does, however, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the X Pro for real-world mileage, but this scooter has been discontinued, so this comparison isn't all that insightful. When measured up against five other models within the same price class, the X GT has one main rival. Yep, yeah, you guessed it, the Mantis King GT. Seriously, forget Godzilla vs Kong, who wants to see Wolf vs Mantis made into a movie? Here, the Wolf has to settle for second place, with the Mantis coming out on top, thanks to its 56 mile range. Now, this may seem counterintuitive, considering that both the Mantis and the Wolf share the same power-hungry motors, but have batteries that differ in size, with the one in the Mantis holding 14% less energy. Its maximum mileage may outstrip the Wolf as a result of its lighter weight, but things are flipped on the head when we consider real world range. Here the Wolf achieves an impressive 43 miles, while the Mantis keeps the wheels rolling for 38. This is an area where the Wolf Warrior XGT excels. Armed with sharp and responsive zoom hydraulics, you can expect to come to a stop from 15 miles per hour in just 2.4 meters. This is one of the best braking performances you'll find on a high performance scooter, let alone within its price class. As well as the hydraulic discs, you also get an anti-locking braking system, otherwise known as ABS, that can be switched on or off by the display. It works by sensing when the wheels are about to lock and then rapidly reducing and increasing the braking pressure multiple times per second to apply the optimal pressure. This allows the wheels to keep moving as the scooter slows down instead of locking up and skidding. With a height of 50 inches and a width of 25, the handlebars are both high enough for tall riders up to 6 foot 3 and wide enough to facilitate a satisfying level of control. This sense of control is bolstered by the rubber hand grips that have been ergonomically designed to mould around your fingers and palms, therefore minimising any potential for unwanted slips. And finally, one of the biggest differences between the XGT and the original X is the deck. Measuring 22.5 inches, it's almost 2.5 five inches longer. This is great news for bigger riders and it comes with more than enough grip to keep those size 15s firmly planted, plus it can support up to 265 pounds of rider weight. If you do find that you need more space, the elongated kick plate adds an extra 10.5 inches to the deck and this allows you to lean into the handlebars for greater control. Has Kaboo trademarked the word sturdy yet? If not, then they should. Every scooter the brand makes is tough as nails and the XGT bucks no trends here. Its aluminum alloy frame and dual stem design are premium to a T, while the cable management is neat and tidy. Everywhere you look, the GT is built for longevity. Complete with an IPX5 water resistance rating, you don't have to worry about getting caught in showers or riding through puddles either. One other noteworthy addition is the new spring-loaded plastic charge port cover and M16 3-pin connectors. These not only protect your ports from water and dust ingress, but also deliver a more secure connection to prevent arcing. It may sound like a relatively trivial highlight, but seriously, the lighting setup on the Wolf Warrior HGT is possibly its crowning glory. Let's start with the dual headlights. They're bright enough to usher ships to shore. Then we have the swaggy deck LEDs that illuminate the branding across its sides. This is manna from heaven for the Instagrammers among us, not to mention Kaboo's social media team. The colors, patterns, and brightness can even be controlled by a mobile app. Finally, you have the tail lights, brake lights, and turn signals. Though bright, the one drawback is that the brake light and turn signals can't be used together.
Undoubtedly the crown jewel in the GT's cockpit is the centrally positioned TFT display. One of the most noticeable upgrades, this little beauty is super bright, anti-glare and responsive to your input. For instance, when you brake, a red exclamation mark pops onto the screen. Similarly, when you engage either of the turn signals, a corresponding arrow flashes. And when the headlights are turned on, the screen automatically dims to conserve battery. And if that wasn't enough to appease your tech needs, you can also set a four digit passcode to stop unwanted hands from activating the scooter. Okay, so we just ran through the things that I love, but now let's take a look at the four things that could be improved. Water is wet, fire is hot, and Kaboo scooters are a dream to ride, or oh, at least most of them are. With the XGT, it seems to have everything going for it. Front hydraulic suspension and dual rear springs, beefy tires and a spacious frame, but after taking it for a spin across varying terrain, it was clear that his ride quality wasn't all that I'd hoped for. The rear springs are to blame here. They are extremely stiff, thereby counteracting the front forks, which do an otherwise good job of compressing and rebounding. Instead of soaking up bumps and vibrations, the springs bounce harshly across forested tracks, compacted dirt trails, and any other obstacles you're likely to come across while riding off-road. I hate to say it, but the suspension system is edging toward being archaic. It's been approximately three years since Kaboo released the original Wolf Warrior, and at that time it represented a leap forward in the shock absorption department. However, as the market has grown and technologies have advanced, this system has fallen by the wayside. As you can tell by now, this is the most disappointing aspect of the XGT. If only it had taken a page from the Mantis King GT's book and introduced a adjustable hydraulic shocks, it would have been a fantastic all-terrain scooter. I'll level with you. Although the folding mechanism makes it much easier to fold than that of his grandfather, the Wolf Warrior, it's still not convenient. Measured up against the likes of the Mantis King GT's superior claw-like lever that pulls the stem and neck together in one easy swoop, the Wolf's dual collar clamp integration is clunky and awkward. To lock the stem in place, you need to tighten the collar clamps by twisting and pushing the levers shut. It sounds simple, but you have to keep repeating the process on each lever because as you tighten one, the other one loosens and so on. Eventually, after a minute or so, all the levers will be fastened and you can ride the scooter. Another the issue is that once folded, the stem doesn't lock down to the deck, and this can be troublesome when it comes to carrying the scooter. You can grab the kick plate to help lift it, but there's little room to hold on to. You can also only use two or three fingers as you try to get a hold of the arch that connects the dual stem. Despite coming with what looks like a beefy kickstand, it doesn't lock into place. I found that a little knock or an attempt to stand it up on a slight incline causes the kickstand to move and collapse, potentially damaging your scooter as it topples over. On the button pad that grants you control of your riding modes and motor usage, there's a USB charging port. This would have been super convenient if it worked, but after plugging in a cable and attempting to charge my phone, it did nothing. So is the Wolf Warrior XGT worth your time and money? At $2,295, it represents somewhat good value, taking all that I love about Kaboo's revered range of Wolf models, but making everything more compact and practical, the GT is an affordable performance scooter that bestows the tank-like reliability of its bigger predecessors. With 30 amp sine wave controllers and snarling dual 1100 watt motors, it's fast enough for rubber burning drag racing and makes its mark as the joint fastest scooter in its prize class. Similarly, it achieves a podium position where mileage is concerned too. Plus, with its iconic stem, top-of-the-line hydraulic brakes, and a lighting rig that would send alien invaders scampering back home, the XGT is built with safety and longevity. However, after riding it alongside the Mantis King GT, I found that the latter achieved better performance in almost every test category, including acceleration, braking, build, 
and ride quality. Considering that the Mantis is just $200 more, I recommend opting for it if you want a top performing all terrain scooter. You can see my full review of the Mantis linked in the description. Now, if you want to get your hands on the Wolf Warrior XGT, you can scan this QR code or click the links in the description. And you can also save money by using my exclusive discount code, which I'll share below. And if you want to see my full performance test, you can read the full review on electricscooterinsider.com, which I'll also link to in the description. Now, if you've enjoyed the video, let me know by hitting the like and subscribing. As I previously said, the more likes and subs that I get, the more scooters I can review and the better the content that I can produce for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.